it looks like that gap is expanding and it looks like it's going to be our trio up front. Well, we've said it again. Uh, can't see the trio just holding off the sort of firepower that we've got here. There's too much at stake for too many teams. And guess what? It looks like they're going to do it. 30 seconds, 28. It's still catchable, Daryl, but it'll take an awful lot of effort. And then, as you say, once you've made the catch, you've got little left to spend in the race itself. I was just watching the, the differences between the two breakaways here, the ones in front here and the chasing group. The three in front here, nobody's missing a turn. Everybody's going through. Everybody's doing their part. Whereas behind, you've got Mads Peterson, he's doing a turn, and then, you know, Zimmerman, he's on his last legs, and he's not coming through, and there's a little bit of a lull each time somebody comes to the front. Whereas the guys in the front here, there's no questions asked. Everybody's fully committed. And this is what's making the difference here at the end. That's why we're getting one, one second extra, two seconds extra. As these guys start dreaming, reaching closer to the line, they start believing less as well and start thinking, well, it's not going to happen. Maybe, uh, maybe I can get a, you know, a better position if it, like I can win the bunch sprint for fourth. Um, as crazy as it sounds, it's a Tour de France. But um, the guys in the front are fully committed. Whether they come first, second or third, they want that chance to win a stage. You know, the worst case scenario for the three up front, Sean, is, the, is a podium, for goodness sake, and they won't want to throw that away. They're all working dutifully. They, ha they are building a little bit of room in here to come under the five kilometres to go banner. Uh, they're building in a little bit of cat and mouse room here. It's getting up to 35 seconds. You've seen uh, um, Jasper Philipson, who's really showing a darker side to his character of late, haranguing Mass Pedersen, who's on his own and has done so much work today. And it looks like that lack of cohesion is being displayed with a 34 getting on to 35 second margin which is going to allow these guys to sprint alone well these guys they're all stage winners of course in the tour of france and they're all thinking about winning and as we get uh, closer to the finish they're going to think well what's my possibility here against those riders and that is going to be important as well will they continue on riding all the way uh, to the uh, to the finish and make the sprint i'm not sure they will but this advantage 34 seconds if it was 20 seconds and they start to play around then it could be dangerous in that final 2.5 to gay with, with 33 it looks like they should be able to go all the way well, it's going to take a mighty effort to close this gap. Uh, somebody will, I think, possibly, potentially strike out. Um, the green jersey looks secure on the back of uh, Jesper Philipsen, of course. But it's another opportunity that he would have relished to add to his significant tally. Uh, Darrell, with uh, 3.8 kilometres to go, your final thoughts? I know you're off to the breakaway. I think we're going to have a sprint between these three guys. It's going to be a very difficult one to choose, but I'm going to go with Mahoric. I think today I think he's going to be probably the quickest out of these three um, but interesting I've, what, uh, another thing I've noticed is that all the shots we've seen today are from behind behind the breakaway behind the chasing group so there's no questions asked at the end of the day if there was a motorbike involved and guys are racing behind the motorbikes the voice of Daryl Impey, thank you, mate. Uh, he will be on the breakaway show uh, to ponder exactly what's happened again and uh, yet another surprise, I think you might say. Unless something dramatic happens back here, Betiol does not have the drive here. And indeed, yes, for Phyllison, he uh, does a job himself and he almost looks with disdain at those who would come through. And here we go, it's Laporte that, uh, that does so, but uh, not best pleased to be there. Mas Pedersen has put in more work than just about anybody here, possibly the nearest man to him would be Trentin who makes the exchange with his fellow Italian and indeed they uh, they continue here uh, just to roll through but these guys now, they're easing just a little bit, you can see the finish line up ahead of them Sean, here we go. Yes, well you can see the uh, the banner for the um, maybe the kilometre to go but uh, 2.6 still to go here, 32 seconds advantage, this should be enough, but you never know what will happen in the final. Um, ben O'Connor here, you know, will he continue on contributing? Because I think in a sprint against the two guys he's with, he's going to have a difficulty to win in an outright sprint. So he might be thinking, OK, I just uh, wait here for a moment and leave the other guys ride and then try and take him by surprise. But looks like that call continuing to ride here as we come to the two kilometre banner. Askreen yesterday, uh, despite his time trial and credentials, you just saw an extra kick. Has he actually managed to preserve anything today as they hold this uh, margin of 32 seconds with the two kilometres?
Rangers to go banner. The Flam Rouge is next, virtually no turn in the road. Extraordinarily gentle on a very, very beautiful day, I think you might say, for the three out front. Scenery's been fabulous, the weather's been uh, consistent throughout. And indeed, so has been the level of opportunity that's been handed down to much of the peloton. The brave take it, and indeed the unlucky as well occasionally miss out. There'll be a few who of this group in particular, Sean, who are, are ruining what might have been. It's a high-quality gang we're looking at right now, and they're, they're not going to have a chance of it. No, there's uh, nine chasers here that are going to be uh, you know, a lot uh, disappointed and, uh, and some much more disappointed than others because uh, Philipson, of course, he's got his glory many times here and you know, the riders that you know, need to get a stage win in this tour, they will be major disappointed. So close but yet so far, 30 seconds as we go through the kilometre to go for our three leaders here. So it's between those three now for the fight to win this stage and looking like... Uh, Amazingly, they're continuing on, and I was expecting <laughs> Ben O'Connor maybe to start, you know, playing around a bit because I feel that he's going to have difficulty against the two other men in a, in a straight outright sprint. Well, his meds gets this tightening in the shoes, as you can see, and it is Askreen who's the of all of these men who, are, of course, have had stage success at Grand Tour level, spectacularly so. But the most recent, of course, is Askreen himself, and they all want to follow his wheels, and it's Matty Moore. She was doing to Askreen what Askreen did to Ecorn yesterday. O'Connor's going to have to come up and over the top with 500 metres to go. It's cagey stuff, leaving himself some rush room here. He picks it up right now. They'll be blaring on the radio and he's gone for it. Ben O'Connor had to go long and straight onto his wheel. It's Casper Askreen. Can he possibly get back at him here? Anybody's guess, just for the time being, it's the three of them on Askreen. He's going to get a famous double here. But oh, it's going to be heartbreak potentially. Mohoric is leaving it very, very late to come around him if he possibly can. But Askreen's got a fantastic drive on him. And here comes Mohoric. It's going to be on the throw between the bear. Oh, photo finish. Photo finish. Nobody knows who's got that. That was absolutely remarkable. And now we will look for the minor places. Points up for grabs. And it's most likely to be Mr. Angry who comes through in a few moments time. Yes, for Philipson wants more points uh, up for grabs. And of course, he's got the lead-in of Matthew van der Poel as well. And this is almost, you could have scripted it, I guess. And a man who says, no, you're not having this all your own way. I'm a tough guy on a tough day. And Mass Pedersen comes through and maybe dreams about what might have been. Let's see indeed if uh, Philipson can come round and tries to, using the anger and adrenaline, and indeed makes it fourth place for him. Fifth indeed for uh, the man from from Lidl, Mass Pedersen, my life, what a day. Three and a half hours just over, and what a finish we had as well. They were wrestling each other down there. There's still others to finish, but it's only going to be minor places, I'm afraid, for they, and wondering what might have been. Haller has decided to, to pull off the front here. It'll be him, but... Just check this out. We wait for the results, Sean. Still not sure? Yes, it looks like Askreen just held on there and uh, Mohoric uh, you know, was in a prime position because Askreen did take it up that bit uh, further out, considering the difficult day they had. But looks like that Askreen again had that power just to hold off and get a second stage victory. Well, if it is, there'll be no surprise. The, the joy unbridled, I think, for Askreen after winning a stage yesterday. They may well have doubled up. We're still waiting for the official result. We'll have a, uh, a photo for you. Uh, at the moment, it's being informally declared as Mohoric. So let's wait and see. The margin will be extremely tight. Ah, oh, Julian Arfalit wondering what might have been today, getting the biggest cheer of all. Let's have a look at it, Sean. Off you go. Wow. It's on the throw, and here it comes. Ooh. Ah. There it is, Moric. It is at the line. On the throw, and that will go down as extraordinarily welcome to Bahrain victorious, have already tasted success, of course, in this race. <laughs> Wonderful.